about convenience. Like people just come pick up their phone and just be like storage near me, right? And then they're going to just start calling around. And they don't want to be, if they're living in a city, they don't want to be like driving three miles to get to their storage facility. They want to be like right around the corner. Now, secondary markets will be like a three to five mile radius. Like they're okay driving a little bit. Tertiary markets also, they're okay with like, you know, because they know it's out in the country. But um, so anyways, we just called all the storage facility owners in Live Oak. We talked to every single one of the owners and somebody else wants to sell. So we already put an offer. They got us all the numbers. We just put an offer in. All right. So that's really kind of, and all we did was just call, like we just have our base area now, you know, so we have something near Tallahassee. So guess what? We can be calling all Tallahassee everywhere and just be like every Tallahassee storage facility in the area, like, you know, all in the Northern area, all around Tallahassee. We're going to just call them all and just see what they want to sell. We call all the ones in Valdosta and just see what they want to sell. We just, if we have one there, we might as well see if anybody else wants to sell. So anyways, my point is, is that all we're doing to find storage is driving for storage. You saw Chris driving from the north of Georgia to the south of Georgia, which takes six hours, right? It's about a six hour drive, maybe like five or six hours. He drives like, he'll drive all around and do like a whole loop-de-loop -loop thing and stuff. And so it takes like all day to get down and then he'll do his little boots on the ground stuff and kind of check out all the facilities and do what he needs to do. And then he'll drive back completely different way and go all the way back and do a loop-de-loop -loop and come back home and he'll pick up just by doing that route he'll pick up 20 or 30 different facilities all right he'll just call every single one of them the ones that he doesn't get a hold of he puts them on his sheet right so we have a sheet that we keep track of everything and all of our follow-ups and then so like right now I told him because I have a lender that has like two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and I'm like I need we need to find some money for this lender. I mean, we need to find a storage facility for this lender. Um, and so he's like just calling around and trying to find storage facilities, which is probably a $225,000 facility is probably around maybe 75 units or something like this, 60 to 100 units, depending on if it's like a piece of crap or if it's like not bad or whatever. Okay. So that's really what we want to do. So if you have any questions about how we find our facilities, put it into the chat right put it into the chat and then if you want me to take a look at your areas any areas at all we can always look around and kind of not show you kind of like mentally like how i do everything how i organize everything to find storage okay all right cool so that's it for the find them the find them all right funding them i wanted to talk a little bit about everyone was like where do you get the money from actually put into the chat right now if you really truly are interested in buying self storage, put into the chat whether you've got money or you don't have money or you know where to find money. And whether or not you do or don't, I'm going to tell y'all how to get into the storage investing world. I'm going to tell you. Okay. So I would like to know who has money and how much money do you have? Don't be embarrassed because guess what? When I got into the business, I didn't have any money. And in fact, all the facilities that I ever buy, I never put any of my own money into them. Any. All right. Now I do put money into the operating side, right? So we're funneling our money in back in. If you have money, it makes it so much easier. But I always like my dad always said when I was growing up, you can take the easy way or the hard way. And for some reason, I always took the hard way. And so I always like to take the hard way. So I took the, I'm going to, I'm going to find property and not spend a dime of my own money doing it, which is the ultra hard way of doing it. And then if you have, and if, if you want to take the easy way, you're like, oh, I'm going to save up money right now. And I'm going to save up enough money so I can have a down payment of my storage facility. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find an income producing property. And I'm going to put 20% down and I'm going to go buy this facility. All right. Sounds like that's the easy way. The hard way is like no money. Both ways are kind of hard, but the harder way is the no money way. Okay, good. All right, so um, let's see. We got a little bit of money, a little bit of money. I have time and a little money. Uh, obviously, I don't have any money. Okay, okay. So you guys don't have a lot of money. Awesome, 25K, okay. So 50K, awesome. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, got it. Some money allocated for remodel. There's no remodeling in, uh, 
in storage, honestly. Very, very, very little. Now, there, I mean, that's called in, in self storage. Remodeling is called CapEx, okay, capital expenditures. So on the commercial side, on the residential side, you renovate and you remodel. On the commercial side, you, um, you do CapEx, capital expenditures, okay? Most of the time in the storage world, there's not a lot of CapEx. Now, we have a storage facility that's going to be get, getting repaid. We have like 60 grand to do this. So we're like quoting out to try to find somebody to do it for 60 grand. I got, we got one for for 80 grand. I was like, let's try to get us, let's try to get it down to 60 grand. We got to call around and see who we can get, right? So we have 60 grand. Now we've owned that facility for four years and we are finally now able to repave and it needs to be repaved. That's the thing. But as you see, we had no capital. We had, we had $10,000 in capital X or CapEx when we bought that facility. And then we just started, we just started making money. We just started like, let's make some money. Let's make sure that we're making enough money to run this thing. And then on the back end now, four years later, we're, we have enough money to do uh, to do paving. All right. So this is my way of doing business. This, this is my, this is not right or wrong. This is how I do it. Some people are like, I want to get that thing paved and beautiful all the very beginning. Right. So they're going to borrow X amount of money to get in there and to repave and do all that stuff. And then they're going to pay interest on that and just add it to the deal. Personally, I don't do that. My husband would love for us to do that, but I don't like to do that because I don't want to pay all that interest and all that money. We're already paying such high interest rate because we're paying money to private lenders. Private lenders are higher interest than regular, you know, than banks, right? So for me personally, borrowing the less of the least amount of money is the best way to go. Ask my husband, who's a manager who manages the facilities, he would rather get all that money up front so he can do everything. All right. So uh, there's not a lot of like CapEx, unless you have like huge thing, you might need a new roof like later down the road. If you buy something from like the 1960s or 70s, most likely you need a roof. We are in the 1980s and it's, I mean, it's a, these are like 50, 50 year roofs, right? So in the 30s, like maybe the late 20s and the early 30s, we're probably gonna have to get new roofs on these things, right? Try to sell beforehand maybe. But, uh, but anyway, so that's, you know, these metal roofs are like lasting 50 years, but that's why there's not really a lot of CapEx, honestly, in these things, unless you want to come in and just like beautify this thing. And I do see a lot of storage facilities come in, they want to paint, and they want to do this and that, do this and that. Like our painting is just getting Chris, our boots on the ground guy to come up and like, you know, paint. You know, that's what, that's our painting or Pete and my, my husband, Pete and Chris going out and painting and stuff. That's like our painting is okay. So we are really kind of like boots on the ground. All right. We're not a reef. All right. We're boots on the ground. 